Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I've been asked by several over the past year or two to uh, put together a video on some survival stuff. So I'm going to do a quick video so I can post for everybody to watch and kind of give some ideas. Uh, I've been asked about two things. One is uh, my survival bag or Bob bug out bag that I have. Another is weaponry. Uh, what types to have or this that and the other uh, so I'm gonna do a quick rundown of uh, some things here I'm gonna do a countdown of certain weapons that you can think about getting your hands on to have and then I'm actually going to go through my Bob I'm not gonna go into the real specifics I'm just going to show you some things you can have what may or may not be better or and explain to you how certain setups will work so with that said let's go into uh, some certain things first thing and, and this is just gonna be pretty quick uh, it is weapons to have in the case of an event so what I have here is I have basically just a layout of different style weapons that you may think about doing now depending on what you want we can start out with something like these and they're pretty accessible to get and they're pretty easy you know one of the simple ones is just a can of mace you know just self protection or this that and the other the only problem with this is, is if you're trigger happy you might only be able to use it one time and then you're just kind of out of luck another real easy one to get is a uh, collapsible baton you know it's pretty good but unfortunately it's kind of you know if you run into somebody a little bit better arm than you you might have some problems or a good knife but then again you I'm sure everybody's heard the saying show up at a gunfight with a knife and then uh, step up to it a little bit and uh, you can go into pistols and you just have to uh, decide what you want uh, and, and, and what works for you or whatnot and then you go into larger stuff like shotguns you can get yourself a 22 rifle if you want. 22 rifle is the number one rifle used by preppers, mainly because the ammo is so cheap. The rifles themselves are very reasonably priced, and they're 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 good for taking just about everything but large game out. So 22 uh, rifles are are very well to have. And then you could always upgrade into a, a sporting rifle, uh, or as a lot of people like to call them, assault rifles. And then if uh, you really want to get all kinds of high speed, you can get into the larger caliber rifles uh, and stuff like that. And if you want to get into this stuff, you know, one of the good things you can always have is like this right here, which is nothing more than a uh, holster for, for them. So like mine is actually designed to attach to my backpack on the side to where I can just carry a rifle right on the side of my backpack so that just give you some ideas of, of, of some type of weaponry you can have uh, another one which I didn't pull out that I should have so I'll pull it out right now and set it down is a crossbow or a compound bow I prefer a crossbow they're a lot more easier for me myself to uh, handle than a compound bow the good thing about these are the ammo is pretty much reusable you never have to worry about it the only downside to these to, to uh, crossbows and compound bows is you don't have the range obviously is what you'll get with one of those so that gives you some idea of weapons you can have uh, or things to survive stuff like that okay next we're gonna go into my backpack or my bob I'm gonna explain to you what I keep in mind some of the things I'll explain to you why some things I won't one of the things that you need to keep in mind when you're putting together your backpack is what specifically do you need and one of the most important things you need to keep in mind is uh, med medications that you may have to have. Make sure those are in your bag. Also, your destination, if you're going to uh, 
if you're gonna head out uh, if you have if you're going to a actual bug out position that has stuff waiting for you then you might not need a lot of stuff in your bob just enough to get you where you're going mine is is actually set up for survival my bug out location is just the backwoods of Kentucky so everything I need to survive just in the backwoods of Kentucky is in this bag you may as we go through the bag think about stuff that you may one in your bag that I don't have that's fine you may see stuff in my bag you don't think you would need and that's fine all uh, nobody's bug out bag is the same it all based on your preferences but this is what's in mine so we're gonna tear through my bag here and show you some of the stuff I have first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over I'm gonna show you this part now this particular bag is what they call a salt pack. Uh, we use them in the military. Uh, it's just a bigger or a smaller version of a full size rucksack. Now, you can see this tube. This is a uh, hydration system. And in the back of my uh, pack, there's a little section in here that actually houses a water bladder. It's a removable water bladder where I can put water in. So. As I'm wearing this and I'm out walking around, I can actually drink water and hydrate myself. Uh, that's very important because the simple fact if you uh, don't have water, you'll die. So try to keep that in mind. Okay, moving in here, we're gonna go into my first little pouch. And this is the most accessible pouch I have is just this right here. And what I keep in here is a flashlight and my little headlamp. And I keep these real accessible. Now I love these headlamps. Uh, they're extremely bright and the best thing about them is when I put them on my head I still have my both hands to deal with whatever I have to deal with. And then of course your standard flashlight. Now one of the things that uh, you want to keep in mind when you're packing lights and stuff like that I have I think all together four lights in this pack all of them run on the same style battery so I do not have to worry about carrying all different kinds of batteries so keep that in mind when you're uh, putting stuff together all right now we're gonna break into it now the first thing you're gonna see here on the side is what's called an entrenching tool this is basically a shovel and this is a military grade. Now, when you go to buy stuff to put in your backpack, try not to go cheap. Uh, you will get what you pay for. Places like Fred's Dollar Source sells these, and the first time you try to push it in the ground, it's gonna break. It's not worth the money. So make sure you get good, solid equipment. Uh, E-tools are designed for multiple stuff. Not only do they dig holes, they can chop wood, they can saw, it's actually got a saw blade, it's got a very, very sharp edge all the way around it, so you can actually cut, and this is sturdy enough that I can actually split wood with it. So, that is why I have the E-Tool. Next pouch I'm going to open up is this one. In here, I have my knife sharpener. Scissors, sewing kit, there might be a few times I'm going to have to set my camera down to unzip a zipper here. Okay, and in here I have a, what people call to is like a pocket knife or whatever, but it's got fork, spoon, knife, corkscrew, everything built in. Uh, you can get these at any camping store or Walmart or whatever and they're pretty cheap and they're really handy to have. Salt and pepper. Now going back to uh, it, there's things in your bag that you might want that are specifically for you. Uh, I have a thing about uh, my teeth and, and I hate things in my it's it, it stuck in between my teeth and stuff. So I keep these little 
uh, toothpicks you can buy but uh, I also have fingernail clippers tweezers and toenail clippers in this bag as well and I'm not gonna waste time I'll put my bag back together later and then I have a couple coffee packets sitting in there just because I'm a huge coffee drinker okay and that's that now we're gonna open up this one now this is where I'm gonna start get really getting into a lot of stuff so you might want to take notes if you want to so we're gonna open this up all right the first thing we're gonna pull out I have a poncho then I'm gonna open up this I'm gonna pull out two more ponchos now these ponchos are just your you can buy these at the dollar store they're really cheap uh, I use them I have them as spare ponchos in case I need them or I like to just sit them on the ground if it's raining I don't have to sit in mud I can sit actually on this and not get all muddy and stuff and then I actually have a heavy actual poncho right here next thing I'm gonna have I have these straps uh, you can get these at pretty much anywhere they got little buckles on them and these straps can be used for all kinds of stuff if I have a strap that breaks on my on my bob I can I can repair it with these straps uh, if I'm out picking up firewood I can roll all the firewood up and wrap this around it and just carry it back or I mean they're just multiple uses for this stuff I'm not, I'm not gonna bother opening this one up but basically what I have in here I have water purification tablets this is one of the musts you have to have. Uh, if you run out of water and you find a little puddle out in the woods that's full of green slimy stuff and you slam your face in it and just drink it, you're probably going to do yourself worse than what you are good. So you have water purif I have water purification tablets in here. I also have a, a bottle of super glue. Everybody knows the 101 uses for super glue around the house, but what you may or may not know about is super glue was originally designed as a first aid uh, substance. And basically, what that's used for is to put your skin back together. So, if you're doing something and you slice yourself, that would actually need like stitches. Well, if you're in an emergency situation and you don't have access to a hospital, you clean the wound and you put super glue on it and you close it and it'll actually close and seal your wound and I'm here to tell you it works I had to uh, super glue my knee back together in Iraq so digging in further I have some soap just a little liquid soap here and in both of these pouches I have two baby wipe packages I'm not actually going to pull them out but there they are two baby wipes bug repellent now this again goes back to uh, you get what you pay for bug repellent is, is is rather important especially if you're out in the hot summer and mosquitoes are out and everything else and don't go cheap on bug repellent don't go buy that that skin so soft crap uh, you'll just get your ass chewed up by bugs so uh, make sure when you buy it you get stuff with good with a uh, deed in it and it's good stuff I have a couple uh, tools that are, I keep up in front because they're handy in case I need them a pair of needle nose and a pair of side cuts I have uh, some pencils and, and pens and I also have uh, some paracord or 550 cord as we call it in the military okay now this is my this is the section I keep my first aid kit in and again if you have any particular medicines like if you're diabetic or something make sure you have stuff in here the whole purpose of these bags is it, it should sustain you for three days so it, and some people even do longer uh, but at minimum you have you if you need medication to survive you better have it in here okay so uh, I don't have any prescriptions in here because I can survive without my prescriptions but I do have certain things in here that I I have specifically for reasons but the first thing I pull out here is this little thing here is called tick remover and down here in Kentucky we have little things called seed ticks and they're extremely small and you have to either have a pair of tweezers or this little tool here to get them out because they're just so small you can't just grab them and pull them out and it also has a magnifying glass which 
I'll, I'll, I'll touch base with a magnifying glass. I actually have two in here. This is one of them. Uh, I'll explain why later. But it's got a little uh, little book in here about about bugs and stuff, and it's just a little handy little thing to have. You can pick them up anywhere. I have a Neosporin triple antibiotic ointment. Now, one of the things that I do have is acid reflex, uh, so I actually have a, a bottle of antacids in here. I have a bite kit, some lip balm, some just extra strength pain reliever, and this is one that I keep specifically for a purpose, ibuprofen. Uh, I have a, being retired military, I have a lot of problems with my joints, uh, knee problems, stuff like that, and, and so I chew on uh, anti-inflammatories pretty heavily. So, and don't confuse uh, aspirin with anti-inflammatory. They are not the same, so don't think a Tylenol is gonna do you any good. I keep some caffeine tablets in here. Hand sanitizer, uh, this stuff is awesome. Uh, when we were in uh, Iraq, we went for about 30 days without showering or baths, we just didn't have them. Uh, so you can imagine we had all kinds of fungus and crap growing on us in places you probably don't really want to know. This is how we handled it. Uh, we would take this, we'd put it on our feet, rub it on our feet, and it kept uh, like the athlete's foot and fungus in control on our feet and stuff like that. So this stuff's great. Now I have a little bitty box here that's just got band-aids and, and butterflies and all kinds of stuff in it. And then I actually have a little first aid kit. It's got an ice pack in it and all kinds of different stuff. So that's everything that's in this one. Okay. Now we're gonna open this up even further. Alrighty. I have three MREs. Now, like I said, the bag is supposed to sustain you for three days. So uh, the reason why I keep MREs, this bag in itself is a survival little kit in itself. It has other things just than food in it. Uh, for example, this has toilet paper in it. Okay, you don't see me having a big ass roll of toilet paper. I have toilet paper in these. Uh, if you go to Walmart and you buy their little mountain survival little meals or whatnot, all they are is just food. And then you have to boil water, pour into them, and it makes your meal. Which that's fine, but you have to get to the point where you got to boil water and all kinds of crap. These are already meals. You don't have to boil water to eat them. You can eat them cold, or these actually have a heater system in them to warm the food up. So this is the reason why I keep MREs. They're more expensive than the stuff you can get at like Walmart. Uh, a case of these, which is 12, will run you about 80 or $90, but for me, it's worth it. So I have three of them. Next, I have a tarp. This is an eight by 10. This is my shelter. A lot of people carry the emergency tents or whatever, that's fine. I actually have a tarp. Uh, I know how to make shelter out of a tarp. Uh, it, it, you, anybody can go on YouTube, just type in uh, tarp shelter and you can watch videos of all the different types of shelters you can make with these. Next I have a wool blanket. These uh, are really nice to have. We used them in the military for like, and, and they're just, they're very, very warm. The only problem is, is you just got to make sure they stay dry. Uh, these Ziploc bags, and uh, they're very—they are large, actual large Ziploc bags. They're actually—they're uh, in here because of uh, extra clothing that I just don't have in here right now. But that's what, actually what these are for. So I have some rope. I keep this. This is just. Uh, an everyday little machete, chop brush or whatever. A hatchet, 
pretty well self-explanatory on that. And I'm going to set these to the side and I'll explain those later. Alright, digging in here, I have a couple emergency blankets. And the reason why I, I have these is, again, I have this wool blanket. And remember I said it, you know, it, you got to make sure you keep it dry. Well, I put that wool blanket around me and then I cover it with this uh, plastic type blanket. It helps keep that blanket dry and it helps keep you warm. I have chem lights and I have this is what this is called is called a, a fence fence tool or fence pliers uh, I reason why I keep this is it's actually a multi tool it's a hammer uh, again it's a pair of pliers it's got nail pullers it's got a claw it's got a little blade on the back it's just a handy little tool multiple uses that you could use this for that's why I keep it digging in here I have zip ties, bungee cords, which goes along with the part of the shelter or rope if you want, twine. I have some wire, and this is not speaker wire, this is actual regular wire. It's really stiff. I keep a bag of uh, rags, washcloths, and this water waterproof bag. I'm not going to break everything out, but basically, what's in this? I have a pair of socks, a sock cap, and and a set of gloves in this waterproof bag. And then I have duct tape and electrical tape. Now I'll go ahead and open up, and, and these are the side pouches. I have a saw, in case I need to cut any wood. This would be my uh, cooking knife set. It's got a little bit of everything. A little bit of uh, just different knives. Uh, I'll get to my fishing tackle in a second, but if I uh, catch a catfish or something, I have the means to you know chop the head off and, and, and fry that sucker up. So that's what that is. And then I have my actual uh, survival knife. So some people are happy with pocket knives. That's fine if you know. I just like my knife. Okay, I'm gonna open up this one. Now a lot of people you'll see that they have in their bags. Well, I got fishing line and hooks, so I'm good. Uh, I, I like to get a little bit more in depth than that when it comes to to that so I have regular fishing line I also have bait uh, if you get stuck out in the winter and you want to do try to fish to catch something yeah good luck trying to find a worm so I actually bought this little kit and it has everything it's actually got catfish bait inside of it actually it's got several different catfish baits inside of it hooks sinkers stringers uh, bobbers you name it this guy's got I think three or four different types of, of bait in it now again more in depth I actually have a full fishing pole in here it's a collapsible fishing pole to where I now I'm not forced to go try to find a stick to tie us tie a string to and then I do keep extra hooks and sinkers So that's what's in that side pouch. Okay, I'm gonna spin this around. All right, in this top pouch, I'm not gonna open it because you can just see in here. I keep uh, two sets of uh, flashlights and some extra batteries that are in here. And again, all my flashlights run off of AAA batteries. So, and I think I have probably about. 15 AAA batteries in here all together. So I'll skip this one because that kind of goes with that. So I'll get into this one. In here, I just keep some pens and pencils, rubber bands. I keep a flexible ruler, 
a little notepad and a larger notepad that's what I keep in there now one of the things uh, like you get you get yourself a of course the phone rings you get yourself a little pad like this and uh, you can write stuff down watch stuff learn stuff write it down you'll have it in your bag all right next I'm gonna get into is this one now this right here is very very important this is also how you are gonna survive two things you have to have uh, well, two things you have to have I'll let the phone get over with all right two things you have to have to survive is water and fire and that's what this whole pouch is, is set up to do this is nothing but fire without fire you can't cook and if it's winter time you can't stay warm and at night time you might not have light so starting with this I keep these these door wedges uh, you can buy these anywhere the construction companies use these to put doors in the houses uh, very thin very dry very flammable pieces of wood very very useful to start a fire inside here first thing I'm going to pull out is uh, steel wool now don't confuse this with SOS pads this is just plain steel wool steel wool is very very flammable yeah, if you, and if you don't believe me just go get you some steel wool pull it off put a light to it and watch that sucker light up very easily very useful to start a fire matches starter fire matches basically just a big big match you strike it right there and it's got treated wood and the whole thing burns down I do keep some big lighters in here in case I, you know I, I want to do it easy but the thing you got to remember about about lighters is if you're stuck out in the real real cold these don't like to work if it's real cold so don't rely on lighters like this you're better off with matches okay this is a fire starter magnesium flintlock fire starter Now this, when you go and you see stuff, you, you have to see multiple uses. This is actually a toy. And what this is, just a little plastic thing. And uh, What this is designed for is for kids. They can put like a bug in there. It's got a magnifying glass. And they can sit there and look at the bug and everything. All cool. Well, I saw this. I went, wow, that is an excellent way to start a fire. So what I did is I took this. I chopped up little shivers of wood. Stacked it in here so I can actually break this open put some wood down that magnifying glass I can use the Sun I'm sure everybody's roasted ants with a magnifying glass at some point in their life well, it's the same concept you take this you take that magnifying glass and you light that wood up you have fire and these are really really good to have what these are are petroleum cotton balls and how you make these you just take some Vaseline you put it in a pan put it on your stove heat it up it'll liquefy and you dip your cotton balls in it and you let them dry and then you or you let them cool down you put them in here these are very very flammable petroleum it's basically like your little uh, lantern system you have your petroleum or your oil and then the cotton is your wick and one of these little cotton balls will burn for about five minutes okay and they are extremely easy to ignite uh, if I took this little fire starter here all I'd have to do is sh scrape a spark and these will just light right up uh, but like anything else if it's really cold these don't like to light very well but when they get really cold and that's why I have the magnesium this whole bar right here is nothing but magnesium I scrape that magnesium on that ball and then strike a spark well magnesium flares up no matter what temperature it is and then of course as it flares up it'll hot that or it'll heat that petroleum up and then it'll ignite up so multiple different ways to start a fire so that's it that's everything I have have any questions feel free to ask me and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video Bye.